I, I was in the mindset of let me just avoid, you know, creating controversy just because that's not my personality but I also have realized in the past that that's the wrong way of thinking and I should not have been thinking that way because I do have a responsibility with a big platform to speak up about what I believe in and I think it's really just a matter of speaking up more and more often and making sure that people know what you stand for and stand against. guys and welcome to today's Q&A video. So I recently posted on my Instagram, post is going to be right here, and asked you guys for your questions to do a Q&A video because it's been a while since I've done one of these and I'm excited about it. There is a special announcement at the very end of the video. I would tell you at the beginning, I really want to because I want you guys to listen to it, but I also don't want you to skip through this entire video just to go listen to the announcement. So Anyway, it will be at the end of the video, so make sure you stay till the end of the video. I'm really excited about this announcement. It's going to be like probably my favorite decision that I've made all of December, and make sure you guys stay tuned. So let's just go ahead and get right into the Q&A questions. I just like spent the last 10 minutes, sorry, 30 minutes doing my hair and makeup, and I'm like, <laughs> gotta keep time. Okay, question number one from Nurse Stella Fitella. You are so pretty. <laughs> My question is how do you keep your clients motivated without holding their hand and being available to them 24 seven? That's a really good question. The biggest thing that I think keeps people motivated, it has to be internal within themselves. It depends on what stage of decision making they're in when they become your client. So there's the pre-contemplative phase, the contemplative phase, the action phase, and the, I forget what the actual phases are, I'll put in the little graphic right here. But if they're in the pre-contemplation contemplation phase and they come on with you maybe for a lower price, it might they might not be internally motivated as much as you would need them to be to make sure that you don't have to necessarily hold their hand. I do think coaches should be a motivator. That should be part of your job description. And if you feel like it's a waste of your time and you resent doing it, you might want to increase your prices a little bit just to you know make sure that you both feel good on both ends. The other thing about the increased price thing, I know I said that twice, is that in my experience, people who pay more pay more attention. I've heard that from many different people, but many different coaches, but typically I've noticed that if I charge a lower price and it's not uncomfortable for the person to pay it, depending on who your client is, what kind of clients that you wanna work with, obviously it like we can't necessarily, coaching is a service and you can't necessarily serve every single person in the world. That's what these YouTube videos are for, to give out free information and free content and social media and all of that stuff. But typically if you charge a little bit more and someone is slightly uncomfortable, they're gonna wanna get their money's worth and they're going to be internally motivated a little bit more. So the way that I like to do it is keep a Facebook group running and make sure that everybody knows if you have a question or if you have a concern, go ahead and go in the Facebook group because if you have a couple of clients, usually they're all similar and they usually all have the same questions. Similarly, if you set the expectation in the beginning that if they're you know giving more to the group than they are just taking, that they're gonna be doing better in their own process because as you teach things, you learn them better and you become more motivated when you see everybody around you being motivated. So set the expectation in the beginning. Okay, Elise B. Fit, what jobs did you have before you became a social media influencer? And I wouldn't necessarily say that being a social media influencer is my current job. I currently run businesses and being a social media influencer is part of that. But my first job was a filing secretary at my grandpa's office. So I just filed files for like $10 an hour. Um, I was also a waitress for quite a while. So I waitress at the Coast Guard house in Rhode Island. Any of you Rhode Islanders know what that is. I had to wear a tie, learn how to tie a tie from that particular job. And then I was also a waitress at the Venice Ale House in Venice, California, really close to where I live now. I loved it. It was really fun and very character building for sure. And what other jobs did I have? I think that was it in terms of jobs. Oh, I, I waitress at another place too. So mostly a waitress. What is something new that you've learned having your puppy? I asked because I feel like I learned so many new things about myself when I got my puppy from Caracor Fit Life. Oh, something that I learned about myself. I love being a mom. <laughs> no, I think I'm like, I'm very, I think I already knew this about myself, but I'm very nurturing and I'm very like focused, like other focused. And I've also learned that having another being to focus on 
keeps me more focused in my work when I am focused. Like for example, Cooper's in his crate right now. We had a trainer who taught us a little bit about crate training and keeping him in the crate when we can't 100% focus on him. And for me, I was always feeling really bad about it. And Brian was like, he'll be fine, he'll be fine. Um, realizing that you kind of have to be when you're training a puppy, a little bit more of an authority to them than like on their level and a friend, just so they can learn what the roles are in the household so they know to listen to you when you teach them something essentially. So that's definitely something I've learned. It's been a process, but I definitely feel like we've gotten so much better at it as time has gone on. <sighs> I don't know why I'm breathing so heavy right now. <laughs> what skill and quality are you currently working on most developing from Emily Duncan? Thanks, Em. One of the qualities that I'm currently focusing on developing, I'm focusing on developing my speaking skills, which is completely different if you're speaking on a stage versus in a YouTube video. In a YouTube video, you can cut and edit things out. You can gather your thoughts, take notes, stuff like that. And you can kind of be yourself and a little bit more relaxed. And if you're going to be speaking on a stage, which I've gotten asked to do a couple of times next year and this year, it's a little different in the way that you have to speak and present yourself and you have to have you know, storyline and take your audience through different kinds of emotions and stuff like that. So I did hire a speaking coach. Um, his name is Yaya Bakar. I'm excited about it. Um, we're doing a one day training in January about that. So I'll film it for you guys and, and show you. But that's one of the things that I'm working on developing this year and I'm excited about it. What are your greatest personal and life accomplishments this year? Uh, from Eve Fitchick, one of my Influencer Academy girls who crushes it by the way. Um, thanks for the question, Eve. Personal and life accomplishments, I'll leave like business out of it, but personal accomplishments, I think one of the biggest things is that my main goal for fitness in general was to be able to get to a place where I feel comfortable with what I eat, how much I'm eating, and like the way my body looks. It's taken me a really long time to do that with my ups and downs of competing, and I think I've gotten there this year. Like, it's taken me three or four years to really feel like I like the way that I look, I can maintain it for a long time without feeling like I wanna cut or bulk or whatever, um, which I will in the future, just like I feel good right now and I don't wanna mess it up. Um, and I'm eating you know, a really great amount of food. I'm eating probably between like 200 and 250 carbs a day, a little less protein. I am eating a lot more plant-based as of lately. You guys have seen that in a lot of my videos. I'm not 100% there, but I'm definitely eating far less meat and far less not far less protein, definitely just less protein in general and animal-based products. Um, and I feel really good and I feel really happy and I'm eating lots of like vegetables and fruit and yummy food. And like, I literally had a pint of Ben and Jerry's ice cream the other night and it wasn't even a thought in my mind. I was like, that's fine. And I woke up like fine, I was normal, continued on with my day, got a good training session in, whatever, but not because I was like eating a lot the night before. I was just like, I'm craving this, I'm gonna eat it and I'm gonna get back to my lifestyle and it's just been one of the most amazing things this year. Obviously, accomplishment, I wouldn't say finding like the love of my life is an accomplishment, it's just one of the most amazing things that's happened to me this year. Same with getting my baby, moving into a place that I love, the man that I love, having really great friendships and yeah, yeah, all that stuff. Just relationships are really good right now. Relationship with myself, with food, with my boyfriend, friends, all that stuff. Really good question from Appel underscore fitness or a pill, not sure. When you want to add someone to your team, this is a really good question, what are three things that you look for and get your attention in potential candidates? That's a really good question. So when I was hiring candidates for my first position, I didn't really know what I wanted. And Carrie, who came to me and she literally told me what she thought that I needed in my business without me being able to articulate it myself. And that was one of the biggest things to me. Now what I look for, Definitely someone um, who is self-sufficient, who I don't have to micromanage. I would like, you know, whoever comes on my team to be someone who believes in the mission and the long-term values of the company. They, I want them to feel like they're a part of it so that I don't have to motivate them to do well at their job. I want them to be motivated by more than just the income that they're getting paid. I want them to be motivated by being a part of a bigger, amazing company um, and I also don't want to have to like check up on them and make sure that they did their job the way that they're supposed to be doing it. I want someone who's already really reliable who already you know knows what they're doing to an extent. I'd rather hire someone who's a little higher level than pay somebody less at this point. 
And like I said, I want them to be excited about being in the company, but also know what they're doing to an extent, obviously, like I train everybody to make sure that I've also learned this year that when hiring team members, you can't expect them to just know what to do because you know exactly what to do and you have all these subconscious processes in your mind. Like, for example, when I was hiring my video editor, I learned so much, holy shit, about the subconscious processes that I go through in my head when I'm creating videos and you have to teach someone else what those subconscious processes are but you also have to figure them out for yourself. If you were to write down the exact process, what would it look like? Then you can toss it off to somebody while training them and teaching them like, okay, add this, take away this, do this differently. Um, and then moving forward, make sure that you continue to do the same exact thing. And it's a, it's a collaborative partnership, especially when you're hiring out a contracted employee, which means someone that works for other people as well. So Emma works for other people. She is adopting everything for my business, but, um, and how I like to do things obviously, but it's not expected of her to just get it right away. So you have to work with them, but you also have to, they also have to understand that they have to live up to the standard of the business. What's the funniest thing that Cooper the dog does and always makes you laugh? <laughs> I don't want to go get Cooper because he's probably sleeping in his bed right now, but he always does this really funny thing. When we got him from the uh, Mutt Shack, the adoption center, his name was Pascal, and on his little teal bandana, they wrote Pasca. They didn't even write Pascal, it was P-A-S-C-A. -A. Um, and we say that whenever he gets in like his little puppy biting mood, that we call him Pasca, that's his like alter ego, where he goes like this. <laughs> he like snarls his nose and then he's just like and he and he lunges at you it's really, it's really fun i just died okay what are some of the methods and ways that you focus on the small things that need to get done that lead you towards accomplishing your bigger goals sometimes i get overwhelmed with my dreams and goals because it feels like i'm not moving toward them because big things don't seem to be happening from carar underscore carar underscore Totally, totally normal, Karar. Um, I'm not sure what your first name is. I'm sure that's not, oh, that's, I took a screenshot, not actually Instagram. But honestly, you have to break it down into micro wins. You have to, you have to celebrate your small wins. And you have to understand that those small wins are what are going to get you to your big win, but you can't just like skip over them. And if you skip over a small win, so maybe say your bigger goal is to lose 30 pounds. And if you lose one pound, or three pounds or whatever, you can't skip over it and say, well, fuck, I need to lose 30, I only lost three. You have to say, yay, I lost three, I'm going in the right direction. So just reframe your mind to say, I'm going to celebrate my small wins. Actually write out what those small wins are so you know when to celebrate them too. So like celebrate three pounds, celebrate 10 pounds, celebrate um, a really great experience going out to eat where like I stuck to my goals or maybe I had less guilt and shame after I ate something. You, Make sure you know what those small wins are going to be. Maybe set a timeline for them. Maybe make sure that they're realistic and attainable and stop to celebrate them. Because if you don't, you'll never be satisfied. And when you get to your big goal, you're gonna be like, great, I need another big goal. F so just make sure you're celebrating your small wins. Lena, Mary G, Amanda, I love all that you do. I was in your first FOCA class and loved every bit of it. That's awesome, Lena, thank you. My question is how do you manage staying off social media like you say? Um, in your podcast, post and run, but also working on engagement and growing a following. I want to do both. Um, I have the Mo Moment app, but I also want to work on social media growth. So Lena, that's a super, super good question. The biggest thing that's helped me and a lot of my students, they say, is yeah, you, you want to be engaging with people throughout the day or just in general on your page consistently. But if you really, really want to make sure that you're minimizing time on your phone, structure out in your day. Like I'm going to answer questions on my phone in my Instagram app, make my posts, answer questions and comments and like create engagement for the first 30 minutes and maybe go engage with other people's posts for another 10 minutes or five minutes or whatever in a blocked period of time and then put your phone away for the rest of the day. So this is especially important if you have a full-time job, you can't be on your phone during the day create 30 minutes in your morning to write out your post make your post engage with people and then go engage on other people's posts and be a part of the conversation elsewhere and that's how you're going to continue to grow and then do it again at the end of the day so that's just my best tip batch out what you're doing and when you're doing it tylo strand fit she said are you and brian thinking of getting married anytime soon have you ever talked about marriage i think it's funny that youtube and youtubers it's really easy to ask these questions like I get it. I totally get it. Um, yes, Brian and I have talked about it. 
many times before and yeah we've talked about it <laughs> someone also asked about my hair care routine i just got my hair done it's slightly darker i literally don't have a hair care routine i wash it two times a week i put it up in buns and like hair ties i know i shouldn't do that i should use a scrunchie or something i don't have a hair care routine i get it done like once every two three months i got some layers in it that's it. I don't really have a hair care routine, so. Oh, hi, Alyssa said, and P.S. If you guys follow Alyssa Russ, she's going to be on the podcast super soon. I'm really excited about it. Um, she said, in what ways do you think folks with a huge reach and large IG accounts can do better to promote inclusivity, call out misogyny and homo transphobia and support POC? I love this question and I think that I could totally do a better job at this. Uh, just a disclaimer, I fully support the LGBTQIA community. Um, I fully support calling out misogyny and just disgusting comments. I talked about this with actually somebody um, on the podcast the other day and calling out misogyny and, you know, making sure that I'm promoting men and equal men and women being equal partners and being partners in life rather than one being better than the other. I don't think women are better than men. I don't think men are better than women. I think we have to work with each other, you know, moving forward in life for for life to work out. I feel like if there is this contempt and eye roll at one gender over the other, it just creates a really, really negative relationship. And if genders are just fighting with each other, it just life doesn't work that way um so i think in terms of how we can do better i think consistently sh using our voices like i said i could definitely be doing that more um if we see anything negative happening like if there's anything in the news that has to do with that make sure we speak up about it and support it um i try to repost as much as i can on twitter if there's ever anything going on on twitter that I see that I want to stand up for or stand against. I try to do my best at that. Um, I've definitely been guilty of not doing that as much in the past because I, I was in the mindset of let me just avoid, you know, creating controversy just because that's not my personality. But I also have realized in the past that that's the wrong way of thinking and I should not have been thinking that way um, because I do have a responsibility with a big platform to speak up about what I believe in. And I think it's really just a matter of speaking up more and more often and making sure that people know what you stand for and stand against. Okay, this is a super good question. Sanders Skinny to Fit said, do you think someone has to have sponsorships to make it coaching online? And my coach Will said, no, you don't, do not need sponsorships to create a successful online coaching business. I think this is a great question. And I also think this goes hand in hand with followers. Um, someone recently commented on my YouTube video saying, Amanda, has a net worth of $75,000, Brian pays the rent. This is obviously a troll, but you know, I think people think that followers equals success. Someone even trolled on Brian's video saying, you only have 20,000 subs, you don't have any success online, which is crazy because people think that success means how many followers you have. People also have said that my videos have gotten less views, so how can I be teaching people about how to do social media when I can't even keep up with the amount of views that I get and continuously get more views? Number one, the reason that I haven't been getting as many views is because my content has been changing and I've been doing that purposely. I've also been posting incredibly less consistently. I think I've talked about this in another video, um, the Honest Truth video, but it's just a matter of the way that YouTube works and then the what the creator does, not necessarily because they're doing anything bad or wrong. It's just you have to understand how the platform works and how YouTube works. Similarly with sponsorships, it has nothing to do with your success. Yes, when you grow your followers and you get more followers, sponsors will reach out to you. Influencer marketing is growing, growing, growing. Companies will even reach out to people with like 10K followers now just, you know, to hit all of the levels um, of influencers like micro influencers, bigger ones, blah, blah, blah. But at the end of the day, if you can use your influence to create your own businesses and create your own success, you have to first define what success looks like to you. Does it look like sponsorships? Do you want that is that something that you want um if you do you have to grow your following because that's the only way that it's going to be um a profitable deal for the company or sponsor that's reaching out to you but i would definitely say that if you want to start growing and creating success financially online start your own business focus on you focus on doing your thing the reason that i've been successful this year actually has nothing to do with my youtube channel it has to do with the businesses that i've created yeah they go hand in hand and it's nice to let you guys know you know what i'm doing with my businesses but it's not the number one driver i would say i would say that 
you know, the combination of everything that I've done, the combination of all of the different platforms working together, my email list, all of that kind of stuff is what is, you know, is obviously the driver, but there are plenty of businesses that are successful without social media. Um, so I just want you guys to understand the difference between business and social media. Yes, they go hand in hand now, but it's not, you don't need followers or sponsorships to be successful and have a successful business, if that makes sense. A couple more questions, this video is getting long. If you were to look back on your tre tremendous career thus far, do you have any regrets? If yes, would you mind sharing one of them? If not, totally cool, unicorn heart, unicorn heart from Saya fitness <laughs> um that's a really good question i think the regrets that i have if any let me see i'm one of those people that's like i don't regret anything because everything that i've done thus far has gotten me to where i am today but i definitely feel like i regret maybe saying certain things that were polarizing some people not in the way that it would change my opinion on something but I think as I've grown as an influencer or someone that has constantly people giving them feedback, um, I've been able to be more inclusive on how what I say can affect different types of people who maybe aren't similar to me or have similar mindsets to me. I think maybe in the beginning I was definitely more focused on, or maybe less focused on how other people who aren't like me would be perceiving what I'm saying because there are, are millions of different types of people obviously all different opinions, economy levels, um, genders, races, all of that stuff. So I'm trying to be more inclusive to speaking to just general population rather than just, you know, 20 something year old white women. <laughs> and I think just a regret maybe would just be maybe potentially saying something that would be offensive to somebody in some way that not necessarily because everybody gets offended by everything nowadays, but just it actually was something that was wrong to say. Can't think of anything off the top of my head, but that would be that. Patricia Vergara said, when is the next Influencer Academy? And that's a good question. It's currently closed, but we are reopening the Influencer Academy in February of 2018. We're just focusing on serving our clients right now, so stay tuned for that. What's the best way to reach an audience in the most authentic way possible? Honestly, this is a good question because you use the word authentic in there. You have to focus on two things being yourself and getting eyeballs. Getting eyeballs has to do with creating captivating content that's amazing, that people want to hear, that's valuable, that's entertaining, that's interesting, that's beautiful, whatever. And then being authentic means being yourself, showing your personality, making sure that people know who you are and you're not being fake, you're not being somebody else, you're not trying to be anything in particular. So you have to meld the two. You have to meld how do I get eyeballs and how do I be myself? And that is like your personal brand and your growth. Are there any apps or online systems you use to keep your schedule or finances organized? I still write everything down and save receipts. Receipts. That's a really good question. I know there are a couple of apps. I'm gonna look for them right now. I think I have one on my phone. I should probably use it more, but I do use QuickBooks. Um, I don't think QuickBooks, you can save receipts on there, but there are a couple of receipt saving apps that you can use, but I use QuickBooks and there's a couple of other things like Gusto, um, Zero with an X that will track your taxes and your expenses. Um, I would recommend getting a accountant, bookkeeper, keeper, and or CPA um, if you are self-employed. It just makes it so much easier on you so you don't have to do it yourself. It is well worth the investment. Last question, cause phone's dying. What part of Christmas are you most excited to share uh, about sharing as a family with your boys, Brian and Cooper the Good Dog? Such a good question. I'm just excited to number one, have Brian finally be in my hometown for the first time in Rhode Island. Um, he's coming to Rhode Island from December 20th to December 23rd. I'm staying until December 27th, but he's heading back to West Virginia and we have a wedding in West Virginia on November, uh, sorry, January 1st, December 31st. So excited about that. And Cooper's gonna be coming with me for the first half of the month, the week. <laughs> and then the second week we'll be going to West Virginia. So I'm just excited to just share I don't know, the family experience with uh, my two boys. So I'm excited about it. And lastly, the announcement of the video. I'm so excited to share with you guys this announcement. And I've done a lot of thought on this because it's one of those things that I was debating up in the air for months, but I'm starting a new YouTube channel and I'm so excited about it. What I'm doing with this YouTube channel, I am gonna be doing the same kinds of videos on here, fitness videos, food videos, workout videos, Q and A's, um, all of that kind of stuff. And I know I haven't done it in a while, 
but because I'm making this new channel, it makes me even more excited to keep making what my channel here has been all about since the beginning. So I'm even more motivated to make these kinds of videos, but this new channel is going to be all about business, entrepreneurship, and social media growth. It's going to be a place where I'm gonna be putting like 10, 15 minute tip videos on there. I already have three of them on there, so go check them out. Um, I wanted to launch it with a couple of things on there so you guys can go subscribe to it, get excited about it, watch a few videos, and see what it's all gonna be about. So I cannot wait, I really want you guys to go over there. If you guys are on this channel and you're interested in the business stuff, I'll keep, you know, vlogs here, I'll do business updates on here still, but most of the tips are gonna be on there just to keep it clean, make sure that the people who are really interested in, in it are excited about it and they're excited to, you know, have one particular place where that's always going to be. So I'm super excited. Um, make sure you guys go check it out over there. It's in the description box below go subscribe. Ah, I can't wait. I'm so excited. Thank you guys so much for watching this video and I'll catch you guys in the next one.